Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV and today I'm bringing you guys the Champions League final review. Real Madrid versus Liverpool. Real Madrid won this 3-1. This for me is one of the saddest games of football I've seen. And in a way I have to say it did feel pretty anticlimactic afterwards. I mean with this season in particular in the Champions League there have been so many memorable moments. Last minute goals, unexpected victories. I'm thinking of Liverpool, I'm thinking of Roma, Madrid against Juventus. Been so many incredible moments and this final has felt very anticlimactic after this entire season in the Champions League. Um, yeah, uh, of course, congratulations to Real Madrid three times in a row. You couldn't even do that on Football Manager. I mean, most people can't. That is an incredibly rare achievement. This could probably be one of the only times we ever see a team win it three times consecutively in our lifetime. So we have to have respect for that. We have to applaud what Real Madrid have achieved with that. And congratulate them. But um, but yeah, you guys, I've got a lot of things to talk about. I'm going to be talking about Salah. I'm going to be talking about Gareth Bell. I'm going to be talking about Carrius Plus. I'm going to be talking about why Liverpool fans will feel very aggrieved after this final. And I'm just going to be expressing my thoughts on why it was such a sad day. And why it was so anticlimactic. But starting with uh, you know, the lineups and the formations. Now, I had to do a video with another Liverpool channel. And I kind of feel like I got everything right in terms of how the game was going to go. I've been saying for a while that I thought Liverpool had a definite chance to have a go at Real Madrid and do something against them and really damage them. And during that first, you know, obviously before Salah went off injury, which I will get into in a second, they were dominating the game. And it was how I expected it. With Real Madrid, what is imperative and key for them to actually play is getting Modric and Cruz in the game. If these guys aren't on the ball, if they're not dictating the game, the rest of the team can't do anything. They're, in a way, they're like two playmakers. The fullbacks can't get as forward as much. And if the fullbacks can't get forward, that means the guys that operate in the half space, like Ronaldo, Isco, etc., they can't really do anything. And of course, it's key that Madrid have their fullbacks pushing up. They're kind of synonymous with that style of football. Marcelo, even though he wasn't amazing in this game today he really struggled a lot before Salah came off and Liverpool were doing all the things I knew that would be damaging and really scaring Real Madrid they were pressing I mean their press was incredibly good and what Klopp does with his teams is you have to commend it you have to rate it very compact shape in the central areas in midfield probably the gaps between the midfield uh, strikers and defense and midfield maybe 20 25 yards between them they didn't care if Madrid had the ball out wide in the flanks. The whole shape was in the middle. And when they were ready to press, they were pushing men forward, still keeping their shape at times. And Madrid were struggling a lot. They couldn't play out from the press. They were forced to play a lot of long balls. How many times were their defenders? Fullbacks playing super long balls, but obviously Carval made that mistake that went out. Uh, Ramos overhitting balls. Marcelo, poor link up, wasn't able to link up with anyone, wasn't able to get forward at all as well. And Liverpool with their positioning of the front three as well, causing them problems. Salah in that half space. Mane, a few times before Salah went off, able to use his pace. And Firmino, obviously, starting the press and really linking up. I felt that Liverpool had a chance and opportunity to do something in this game. That was how it was looking. Madrid weren't doing much at all and they were really struggling. And, and this was the first time Madrid have really played a team like this this entire season. A, a team that presses them aggressively and stops them playing out from the back and stops Modric and Cruz getting into the game. But then the unfortunate incident happens. Now, I did do a live stream during this game. And I have to feel this is kind of... I mean, it was sounding incredibly harsh, I know, but a small part of me does blame this on Sergio Ramos a bit unnecessarily reckless and I know Ramos is a player I've seen him do things like this so many times you know he's a type of player old school in a way that likes to take a bit of the man and the ball that's what he likes to do he's in it to win it for his team he'll do anything he can for Real Madrid he's a master of the dark arts it felt unnecessary that he had to even rush in to get Salah like that and of course due to how clumsy and reckless it was he lands on Salah's shoulder it looks like it's been dislocated and the incredible thing for me was that during real time, the referee didn't even pull out a card or blow the whistle. He let play continue. I was like, this is a clear foul. And Salah, one player that I don't think honestly deserved any of this at all. Not with the season he's had. Not with the, you know, the magic he's done for a lot of people. For the people in Egypt as well. A lot of kids. I mean, really, he has been a, a bit of a talisman. The season he's had, he didn't deserve an end to it. Unfortunately, it looks like his World Cup campaign is probably going to be over now. 
I, I was incredibly sad, you know, one of, being one of the best players in the world. And this is one of the games where he would have been the key to Liverpool winning this game. And I think if he had managed to help Liverpool hypothetically win this game, that would have sealed the balance all for him. It's so cruel how football can be sometimes, you know. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm really upset for Salah. Not with this season, the hard work. And it makes you put things into, uh, you know, see the whole picture. Imagine a whole year, your training, you know, your, your pre-season, your training, your diet, um, you know, match games, you're traveling everywhere here and there. It's non-stop. It, it, this is why players like, uh, you know, Benoit Esuokoto was talking about how he fell out of love with football because it's a grind, you know, it gets to you. You know, you do all of this, you work so hard to get to a final for luck, really to affect your chances. It wasn't down to Madrid being the better team or outplaying you or, or Zidane tactically out, outclassing uh, Klopp. It just came down to Lady Luck. And and Lady Luck is something Real Madrid have profited from this entire Champions League campaign. But there's just more bad news. Of course, Carver Howe gets an injury later. I felt very sad for him. Another final he's injured in. Hopefully he'll be fit for Spain in time. Who knows? Again, it just really wasn't great. You know, two injuries in the biggest game of the season. And once Salah went off, in a way, I'm not surprised why Ramos was smiling. That was what they needed. This was when they were able to get Cruz and Modric back in the game. Marcelo and Nacho were able to bomb forward as well. Isco was getting in the half space, linking up Ronaldo. Uh, Benzema was dropping deeper as well to free up space for Ronaldo. Liverpool were forced to have to sit back and defend. And Klopp did change his shape to a 4-4-2. And this was the sad thing because Liverpool didn't have any counter-attacking threat whatsoever. Afterwards, they were really a man shot in every attacking situation. But I have to say credit to the players. Of course, uh, they were due diligent. They kept their positions. They kept working hard, fine. Still kept pressing. I thought Henderson, Milner, impressive. I thought Mane, Liverpool's best player. I mean, the amount of responsibility he had once Salah went off. He had to lead the counter-attacks. He had to take people on by himself. He had to obviously affect the goal by taking shots as well. Plus, he was coming back in position and keeping his discipline. I mean, honestly, I feel Mane is a manager's dream to work with. I think he's incredibly underrated. And um, yeah, from then on, Madrid were able to make use of the extra man in midfield and were really able to start taking the game into Liverpool. Second half starts though. And of course, Isco hits the top of the crossbar. His technique was all wrong. You're thinking this is the luck that Liverpool needed. But again, it came from an individual mistake. And before, when I was talking about, uh, you know, what I was expecting to happen in this game, I kept stressing that Liverpool can't afford to have individual errors and mistakes in this game. That's been synonymous with them this season. The amount of times they've dropped points or messed up games due to an error from a defender or a midfield player or a fullback, it's been incredible. But I wasn't expecting to see the worst individual performance ever, probably in the past two, three decades. Honestly, I can't remember anything this bad. Now, here's the thing. I do sympathise with Karius. It's going to be very difficult seeing his teammates travelling back with them because you know, and you know all your teammates know that the reason why you lost the final was 100% down to you. Two goals. Of course, the first one was one of the worst things I've seen in football. I don't want to exaggerate it too much. I, all of us saw it for ourselves. I don't think the guy needs to be vilified anymore. I don't think anyone's going to be as hard on Karius as Karius is going to be with himself. But that mistake, schoolboy error, it does show that he was too wrapped up in the occasion Joe Hart would have been proud of something like that. Oh, honestly, it was just, you don't do that. And then that does put Liverpool on the back foot. But credit to them, they managed to equalise that guy again, Mane, who I thought was incredibly impressive, especially when it was basically a mission impossible. He still kept performing his duties. Then after that, the game started to spice up a tiny bit. Liverpool was starting to press a bit more. Madrid were doing the same thing. And then Zidane makes a substitution in the 60th minute. He takes off Isco for Bale. Now, I was a bit surprised. At first, I thought maybe you take off Benzema. Maybe you have Isco playing centrally. Have Bale playing out wide with Ronaldo. I was like, wow, this is kind of crazy that he's making a sub so early. But I was trying to understand. I wanted to watch the game for a few minutes to understand why he made it so early. Why didn't he wait for the 70th minute or the 75th minute? And this is what I mean with Zidane Zidane. The guy's game management is some of the best I've seen, especially when it's the Champions League with how high pressure the occasion is. A lot of managers will crumble and wouldn't make brave decisions like that. Again, of course, bravery, it pays off for Zidane Zidane. Saw one of the greatest ever goals in football. 
my mind was literally fucked. It was just destroyed when I saw that goal by Bale. Uh, wow, it was incredible. Incredible. One of the greatest goals I've seen. It shouldn't have gone in. I mean, the guy, it was like Zidane Zidane's goal against Bayer Leverkusen, but a bicycle kick. So this is why I think this will be the greatest Champions League goal. Wow, honestly, I, I just thinking about it, just even thinking about it, I want to play football, you know, I want to play FIFA, I want to do something after seeing a goal like that. This is why we love football, this is why we watch the game, this is why we invest time with our clubs and who we support. To Magical moments like this, and honestly, wow, incredible. Oh. And in a way, a goal like that does deserve to win a Champions League final. But Liverpool, they still kept doing what they were doing. Of course, very limited with what they could do. Klopp, there wasn't really anything he could have done from a tactical standpoint. I mean, they were very limited with the players they did have on the bench. But then the game was effectively sealed. Mane came close again, hitting the bottom side of the post. But then the game was effectively sealed again by Karius. Again, poor goalkeeping, his body balance and his positioning. I mean, you know, his standing point as well was awful. Really, he should have prepared himself to be pushing that ball away. You know when Bell hits it, it's going to be dipping, it's going to be spinning. I don't know what he was trying to do. It looked like he was trying to catch it, I don't know. He had to punch it away, get his body right, get behind his hands. Uh, honestly, I feel sorry for the guy, but I do feel sorry for... You know, I'm objective, you know, I, I do feel sorry for Liverpool. I feel sorry for the fans. I feel sorry for Salah. It's an incredibly anticlimactic Champions League. And I kind of feel with how Madrid celebrated right at the end, it did kind of sum that up. I mean, throughout this entire campaign, you know, lucky wins. Luck has favoured them so much. You know, the game against Juventus when they get that last minute penalty right at the end. Against Bayern Munich, another awful goalkeeping error. And Bayern just missing ridiculously stupid chances against them as well. And of course, Madrid capitalising on the counter for mistakes and mistakes and mistakes. But as I was saying earlier, we have to give respect to Madrid to win it three times in a row. I don't think I'll ever see anything like that again. I just can't keep getting over how anticlimactic the final was. Football can be an incredibly cruel, cruel game sometimes. We didn't deserve this final. I don't think the players deserved it either. If you're a Liverpool fan, the positive is next season is going to be much better. Naby Keita coming. It looks like Fakir will be signing soon. And of course, we will be getting more squad depth and we will probably be getting a new goalkeeper as well. For Real Madrid, it brings up interesting questions. Does Bell deserve to stay again? Of course, this guy has been instrumental in so many finals for them. He has scored the decisive goal that's helped them win it every single time. But yeah, you guys, that is the Champions League over. The season is officially over now. All we can look forward to is the World Cup. And let's pray, fingers crossed, touching wood, that we aren't going to get a final like this in the World Cup. Anyway, you guys, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out.